Hello and welcome to the Advanced Age Role Playing Gamers Podcast. I'm Nathan. I'm your host. I'm here today with uh, Chris Dane Owens and Jason Schultz. They uh, wrote, starred, and directed the brand new movie uh, Empire Queen, uh, The Quest for Magic. Golden Age of Magic. Uh, <laughs> I knew I was going to screw it up. <laughs> Briefly introduce yourselves and, and tell uh, our listeners, our viewers, who you are. Sure. Hi, I'm Christine Owens, and um, I'm the, one of the stars and co-director, co-writer of the project. Um, and Jason Scholl's the other star, co-director, <laughs> co-writer of the project. So uh, how did you guys start working together? Well, uh, Jay and I worked together um, first uh, on these projects was my music video, Shine On Me, which we did a number of years ago. And uh, I was just finishing my album and I wanted to do something that reflected my love of fantasy. And we, our motif was, can we do a music video that looks like the trailer to a $100 million fantasy film? And we came up with Shine On Me. It did incredibly well for us. Um, internationally and domestically. And then we did a second follow-up, which is called Lightspeed. And that did equally well. And a lot of fans were saying, this should be a movie. This looks like a movie. What is this? And even a big Hollywood agent contacted us, said, well, we'd like to try to help you. But that didn't manifest. Cut two years later, we linked up with a great executive producer, uh, Kiki Coral, who was able to help guide the project. Uh, and we found additional funds. And here we are with a movie, finished film. That's amazing. How, how did you two? I mean, like, you know, how's the partnership uh, working together? What's that? What's that like? You want to talk about? Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, we have a lot of similar sensibilities. Uh, we both enjoy the fantasy, action, adventure, that type of a thing in those genres. And so, uh, when Chris and I originally started, just kind of goofing um, originally with just concepts and you know short films, and we realized that we have a really great synergy working together with a lot of the same sensibilities and goals and ambitions for our lives. Uh, and so when we latched on to this project in universe that, uh, as Chris mentioned, was originally uh, from a music video uh, that he conceived of, then we just went full in on t into the development of that. And it was just always teamwork from the very beginning. Okay. When you talk about your love of fantasy, where does that come from? Well, you know, I, ha I have a father that's in the entertainment industry, Gary Owens, from uh, Rona Martin's Laugh. -in. Space Ghost. Yeah, and he, you know, when you have a dad that plays uh, Space Ghost and Roger Ramjet and Powder Toast Man, you can't help but get uh, influenced by <laughs> the fun of it all, the fantasy of it all. And my, my father loved art, too, so he was a great inspiration to me. I think I grew up around fantasy. So when films like The Lord of the Rings and The Golden Compass and... Um, uh, Princess Bride. Snow Princess Bride yeah. and Narnia came out. I was just glued to it. I was right there, ready for it and excited. And so the idea of making a movie uh, within our own universe was very appealing to us. So how'd you go about uh, creating the universe? Uh, who wants to take that? Oh, that, that, that would be Chris's, okay. uh, <laughs> comes right out of Chris's mind. I would say that when we were first doing the Shine On Me video, I started storyboarding and I started creating characters. I wanted angels and I wanted witches and I wanted a nautical character for Jay and mine was a knight. And it's a hodgepodge mix of a lot of different genres, if you will. And um, it just appealed to me. I, I can only tell you that it, it felt right to do this. And, uh, and once we had the ideas, then we started costuming and ca casting the characters. Mm -hmm. And then everybody fit within the universe we wanted to create. Yeah, so Chris, uh, Chris created this template. And then I joined in with my sensibilities of, okay, this is what we're starting with here. And then we just really fleshed it out uh, in the feature phase in particular uh, to, you know, add characters, add sceneries, concepts, images, uh, you know, uh, villains, dragons, all these types of things. So it really, really grew uh, as we jumped into the feature side of it. But I will say this, fans of the music videos can see how we contextualize what they'd already seen in the music videos into the film. We really try to embrace the fan uh, following and give them an answer to what, how does this universe work? How does it all fit together? You're a musician and you've been playing music for, for a long time. Uh, I, I noticed when watching the film that there was a really just a, a, a score running through the whole thing. It was, it was there, it was powerful, had, had a, a, a theme to it. Uh, what was your approach to, to bring that score uh, uh, to the film? 
we got very lucky very early on before we even finished with the film. We were contacted by a wonderful composer named Nicholas Repetto. And Nick is a orchestral composer. And he said, I, I need to do your guys movie. And we have over two hours of original orchestral music. It's a 80 piece orchestra, a choir, and it was all Nick's composition. And he we, it was recorded in Budapest, Hungary. And it, our film is literally wall to wall music. And it's a character in the film, isn't it? Yeah, I, I can't, couldn't be happier with the result of the music because, you know, uh, we listened to Nick's uh, sample tracks, you know, getting to know him and what his, his capabilities were. Uh, but, um, you know, we used a lot of temp tracks and stuff in, uh, originally, and you just get used to hearing your scenes with the temp track, whether it's the right track or not. But then when we substituted that with Nick's music composed specifically for these scenes, I couldn't have been more blown away by it because it took on a, a, no, a new life of its own. It became Empire Queen music specifically with themed, you know, character um, orchestral pieces and so forth. You know, and, and Nick went the distance. I mean, we had um, uh, the strings out of Budapest, Hungary, the horns out of L.A., the choir out of Maine. And it was a, a composite of all of these elements that Nick just beautifully wove together to make the Empire Queen soundtrack. Yeah, it, it was. I found one watching it was it was really uh, ever present, and you know, with a lot of modern movies, you see there's a lot more kind of a ambient uh, type tracks, drones, things like that. And this was really just a live. It, it was a live orchestra through the whole thing. That's just that's a lot of music for a, so, a two and a half hour movie. movie. It's a lot. Yeah, it's it's really a in your face, upfront character in the film, an Indiana Jones type of score, yeah, which yeah. is what we really wanted. We haven't really talked about. Uh, the story movie. So, if you could go into the story, uh, the storyline of the movie, um, uh, what kinds of, of, of viewers would be drawn to this this type of story, and the overall tone you're you're going for with this movie? Sure, we wanted to make, I guess, what we would call a family friendly film. In other words, it's available to everybody. And uh, we wanted it to be adventurous and heroic and even romantic. Um, and so we, we felt like if we pulled in those themes that we love uh, as filmmakers, that, that, that would, we would find our audience, which we feel is a broad audience. Certainly fantasy film uh, fans have really rallied and supported us. Uh, but we feel like it's even broader than just genre picture fans, that anybody could enjoy our film. You know, and we also um, made it a point to weave in a bit of lighthearted comedy. You know, we don't take ourselves too completely seriously in this one. We wanted to have something that was uh, easily consumable uh, and, um, yeah, just lighthearted good fun all the way around. Swashbuckling, romance, fantasy adventure, dragons, mythical things, you know, it's all in there. You know, uh, we, we are an homage to a lot of the elements that people love about fantasy. Yeah. I, I felt, too, um, if uh, folks are familiar with the series uh, Galavant, uh, on television, I, I got a little bit of that vibe without the uh, well, without the Broadway music uh, okay, aspect right. of it. But it's you know we're light lighthearted and, and didn't take itself too seriously. That's so right. yeah, we embraced that tone. We thought that was the right way for us to go. Now let's talk about the the other your your co stars sure. in the movie. So uh, who would you like to to highlight? Oh, gosh, well, first of all, we got so lucky with CL Post, who's our main star in the film. She was in the first music video and the second. Uh, she is a delightful actress to work with, super talented, really fun to work with, and we just consider her to be a, a, a wonderful friend as well, don't we, Jay? Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, talk about having your Disney princess, that is CL all the way through. And uh, conversely, uh, we also have our Disney villain with Mary Elise Hayden, who plays Queen Wendolyn. Both of them super strong actresses right at the top of, the, of our, our billing uh, that we can point to and say, wow, we have such a powerful cast of women leading this movie in so many regards. And Chris and I <laughs> pale in comparison <laughs> to what those ladies can deliver on screen. And they helped raise the bar for everybody on set. Uh, and so, you know, we're so thankful that both of them are included. And uh, they just um, make the whole project shine a bit more, no pun intended, uh, than uh, what we could have ever have hoped for. So uh, let's talk about uh, locations a bit. The, the locations were, were gorgeous. Uh, so how did you uh, go about scouting for those? Well, interestingly, let's see. We shot in Portland first. That was one of our first locations. And that really gave us the whole tone for the film. It felt like Middle Earth to us. The forests, we filmed by the ocean. We filmed in caves. Uh, and that was, once we had that in the can, so to speak, we said, okay, we now know where we're headed. 
Then we went to the snow and we went, we filmed underwater at f three more caves where we had to lower gear by ropes. Um, it was uh, a beautiful mansion that we used as a double for a palace. Uh, so we got very resourceful and the team, you know, contributed to a lot of the fact finding of where we could potentially go. And surprisingly enough, outside of Portland, most of it was shot within about a five mile radius in the valley of LA. And there's such diverse topography there. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised how many caves are in the valley of LA. And in the spring when the rains come, everything turns you know, green and it's lush. And so it looks like New Zealand. So we were able to take the audience to such diverse locations simply by shooting in the right season uh, mm -hmm. in particular places. That's, that's great. So I, um uh, let's talk about your characters a little bit. Uh, Jason, I want to start with you. Okay. Uh, your character, uh, horrible, horrible things happen to your <laughs> character. <laughs> you spend a lot of time in the water. How was, uh, let's, uh, tell us about your character and uh, tell us about how it was, what it was like kind of getting into that character and kind of going through some of the things that, that your character went through. Yeah, so Captain Montgomery Sterling is uh, definitely rough and tumble. Uh, almost drowning, uh, getting hung upside down in a tree. Uh, rolling off rocks after being run through with a cave phantom. Uh, so yeah, he's a little bit of the, the, the solo character on his own, uh, just kind of um, mixing it up with a lot of different elements. So it was fun. That uh, it was a character that uh, somewhat evolved uh, as he went. And, I, and um, uh, honestly, the, uh, the, the tumble off of the rock was not intentional, but it worked. <laughs> I, my arm was sore for about a year and a half after that one, yeah. <laughs> And how about you? Yeah, so Jade Cross, I mean, he was invented in the um, music video. Uh, but then it was like, because it's silent, it's like, well, what do I sound like? And what does he do? And what, you know, what's my action? Um, he evolved as well. I knew that I wanted uh, he and CL to be the romantics in the film. Um, and that our banter together would, would guide a lot of the storytelling. Uh, and I just had fun playing him. And of course, I'm the narrator of the film as well. So that gave us a really great um, theatrical tool or cinematic tool to kind of guide the storytelling. Which we did, by the way, win a Telly Award for, the narration. That's right. That's yeah. right. I was very honored by that. Um, and so it was really fun to play him. I look forward to playing him again. We're hoping we get a sequel out of the project. And, uh, we, you know, we want to take people, we want them to see beautiful places and have fun things happen there. So speaking of awards, we are at, at Gen Con 2024 in, in Indianapolis, and you just won an award at the uh, Gen Con Film Festival. How's that feel? It was great. We won the Best Picture Award, which is their top one here, and that's a real honor. We, we didn't really set out to be a festival film. We've only uh, entered a few, and we've actually won more than half that we've entered so far. So that's wonderful, and we're very uh, honored by it. And this is our crowd, in a way. Uh, the, you know, the gaming world, the fantasy world, these are our people. So we're, we're very privileged to be here. As far as uh, gaming goes, have you ever done any tabletop uh, role playing, any th throw the dice, anything like that? Yeah, as a kid, I played with Dungeons and Dragons a little bit, but it uh, wasn't like a, a huge predominant theme. I was more on the video game side of things growing up, uh, but definitely have an appreciation for that. And uh, our actress, CL, made a cute little quip. It was like, hey, can they make a shoots and ladders for Empire Queen? <laughs> it's like, so we'd be happy with a shoots and ladder version of this. <laughs> you, you know, you, you joke, but uh, if, you, if you walk through the hall over there, a lot of the, the board games and even role-playing games are, are based off of uh, movies and, and t a television IP. There's, you know, Witcher games and, right. and, and, and any kind of flavor. So if you catch the right person, you, you might be able to, to make that happen. So uh, uh, if you want it to happen, then, then let it happen. But uh, I, I just did want to mention, I, I saw on your bio that you spend a, a good part of your time in, in Stockholm. Yeah, that's right. Um, I have a lot of family history connections there. Uh, on both sides of my family, my, uh, my um, grandmother on my father's side and my grandfather on my mother's side were both full Swedish. They were first generation Americans. It was their parents, my great grandparents who came over. Uh, and it was as a youth, um, one of our cousins, my dad's second cousin came over to visit us when she was a teenager. And so I heard this was a relative and a cousin, but she had a funny accent. And it's like, wow, what is this? This is interesting. We come from someplace else. So after college, I did my obligatory trip to Europe and decided, of course, I'll go visit my cousin Sweden, cousins in Sweden, because of, several of them came several times before I had my chance to visit them. And once I got there, man, that country just hit me in the right spot in the right way. And I began a love affair with Sweden. I've been back uh, over 35 times. Now, uh, a two and a half hour movie, mm -hmm. 
uh, that seems incredibly incredibly ambitious. So, uh, was that something you're, you're you're shooting for? Something that that epic and and that detailed, or or, or is it just uh, you just ran out of things that you wanted to cut? <laughs> Certainly, it wasn't uh, intentional to go two and a half hours. That's right. We we thought we might be making a series as well at the same time. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we would have you know six episodes installments, and then but we cut it initially as a feature, and we all liked it so much and felt the flow was there and that the pacing was high. Uh, and we didn't really want to cut much. There's a lot of side stories, but we do world building. Um, and the comments we've gotten so far is like, it's the fastest two and a half hour movie I've ever seen. It moves at a nice clip. It's very entertaining. And so a lot of the films that we like that are in this genre are are that length. Harry Potter's are all that length or longer. Yeah. Yeah. The Lord of the Rings are all that length or longer. So because we're in that genre, we felt that people could handle it, that they were would welcome it. And honestly, yeah. if we had made a six part miniseries out of it, people would have watched all six episodes in one shot anyway and binged it. Yeah. So we just thought, like, let's just keep it all together. Yeah, you know, that's how people watch TV these days. That's it's, right. uh, totally guilty of that here. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what's uh, next for you guys? You're talking about maybe doing a follow-on? Yes, we're, we've obviously, we're on this, this press element of what we're doing, and uh, the film will be on iTunes and Google Play and Vudu shortly. We're on Prime Video right now, and... Uh, Vimeo OTT, which is great for international exposure. And, you know, we'll, we'll be saturated globally shortly in terms of its, uh, the ability to see the film. And I'm sure there'll be more promotion aspects to it. And the goal would be just to go into production on a second one. Uh, and I think we could do that. We wouldn't take as long as we did to make this first one because we learned a lot in the process, a lot about what we like to do, how to quicken the process. Um, and so we could be in production in, you know, six months and uh, we'd love to make a sequel. Yeah, and uh, honestly, you know, we're uh, filmmakers, uh, video producers uh, at heart. So, I mean, I do other projects uh, as well, like uh, shoot music videos and uh, interviews, corporate videos and such like that. So, you know, there's always some sort of production element going on, mm -hmm. uh, but obviously the focus right now is what can we do with Empire Queen, the golden age of magic right now, and then just see where that leads us. Uh, are any closing thoughts uh, for, for us? You know, I, you just always want to thank your team when you do something like this because you do not do it alone. It takes a small army. We have a wonderful editor in Jennifer Barlow, a great executive producer in Kiki Coral. Uh, Yano Janosik, who uh, is our villain, uh, Lord Voss, did a, a, such Two a great villains. job. Two villains. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> um, you know, there's so many people uh, that we want to thank and appreciate uh, because we want to take... Courtney, uh, yeah, Uncle Rumpleton. Fantastic. A, yeah. a cabinet maker who plays uh, a wonderful, warm hearted Santa Claus, as you can see when you watch the film. That, that tracks, uh, and yeah, yeah he, he has got a, a wonderful um, annual routine of going out and bringing a lot of joy and cheer to, cheer to the children during Christmas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think that's it for me more than anything is just to thank our team for helping us get here. We share this award here now with them, with everybody, and uh, we look forward to a bright future in the, in the project. Yeah, and everybody was equally important to this process because we had a very tight, small core team. Very small. And I don't think people would understand of, uh, based on what we were able to produce visually of uh, how lean we really ran this operation. So if we had lost any one of these team members, the film would fall apart in some respects. Uh, so, I mean, it's, you know, Matt Burlow, a longtime colleague of ours, was just on it every day running... Um, uh, the pulling the focus and getting the camera gear and so forth. So if we had lost Matt, you know, we wouldn't be able to have achieved what we did. So uh, to Chris's point, every team member we have to thank and share this award with them because without them, we wouldn't be here today. Yeah, we love our team. That's great. I think that's a great closing thought. Uh, I really want to thank you for spending some some time with us and, no, and with you. our viewers and listeners. Thank you, Nathan. It's great meeting you, and thank you for having us on your show. Yeah, we appreciate it, and we uh, we're thankful to any fan that wants to come. You know, check it out and see what Empire Queen has to offer them in their household. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks. Thanks, everybody.